hand clap to the masses guys we definitely back again for another reaction on this year mr Lix reaction channel guys big up all the mr Lix family for tuning into this year reaction video yet again and of course don't come there big up yourself for tuning into this year reaction video of course if you want to become a part of the mr Lix family definitely subscribe and turn on that post notifications click the bell click there when you click the bell and click all after you subscribe and then you get all the notifications right there don't forget guys to download the app as well of course the mr Lixtube app will be in the play store the google play store or of course the link of that will be, will be in the first comment in the comment box below as well also guys I actually dropped on brvv tv a podcast of course of uh so most people didn't know i must have didn't know uh from time back but of course he was uh with an individual who was a former actor in hollywood brothers and sisters and of course he's known as the watchman of course giving his secrets and whatnot of course we had a podcast with him and of course that link will be in the first comment in the comment box below or you can just check out brbp tv if you download the app you would just click on brbp tv section channel and click the latest update and you will see that right there and then so guys don't forget to check that out that link of course like i said before will be in the first comment in the comment box below as well as the mr youtube app so definitely guys check out these vibrations right there and see what he has to say there's a number of interesting things interesting things and i think you know that stuff that can actually help you as well pretty much everybody out there especially if you have certain um ailments and what that brothers, brothers and sisters but he has some secrets that he wants to reveal and of course we definitely had it on only on brbp tv tv brbp tv television <laughs> tv means television anyways but you get the drift right there anyways guys this is an individual who is known as loftus dura he was one of the journalists that was actually on the scene when the police came and um found well not necessarily found but when police and uh the madman aka kian alexander met up and of course he's there to give his recount on the situation which sometimes you have to get the full story when it comes down to the situation right there brothers and sisters because you can't always trust what the police is saying so he's a journalist that was on the scene and we're trying to get the timelines right there so let's get into it right now dominicans i have been doing some searching i've been doing some digging and tonight for sure we'll be going through with a very fine tooth comb as it were hmm. the statement of mr lincoln corbett the police who yeah. it is said is the acting commissioner of police in dominica because we heard that from since saturday evening we heard that today on the airwaves and some of us are still puzzled to the as to a proper timeline yep on saturday what went down so i'll be going through that with us in just a while but before we go into the meat of things as it were let me still sympathize or worst case scenario empathize with the family the grieving family i must add of that of kanisha Gutier. would i find the girl already we would i find the girl already the family is still grieving i saw a photo they put out of people in the bush let me get it for you this is it right there brothers and sisters this is the photo right there searching today man in bush searching man in bush searching me boy i but Alicia Etienne is still somewhere out there yes she's still somewhere out there and has never been seen since tuesday 7th of june at about 10 30 pm so again we want to consider the family of kanisha Etienne at this time they are still grieving over not having any reports any sightings of no closure at all no closure none whatsoever because of the police we the same police that's supposed to find the man to, to then help find the girl right there. They took his life. Oh my God. In the young Kanisha, up till this time, I'm talking to you. The search parties, they are still out there. And so we want to commend them. We want to wish them all the luck there is to find Kanisha in one way, shape or form. So at least that part of the scenario, that part of the story, some kind of closure as it will it will never have closure my brother from since the time i know that they, they took this guy's life i know that trail going to go cold i know it's going to go cold because previously these people were trying to find all kind of people came and searched nobody nothing you find the one man one man boy 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 can be brought to that very unfortunate story all right 
I also want to take this opportunity as well to sympathize now with the family of Kian. Kian was a human yeah. being. Yep. And even if it was said, whatever was said in the public, be true or false, true at that. the end of the day, he was a human being. He had parents. I am not in no way, shape or form sympathetic to what he has done to Kanisha or to other persons when he was alive. But at the end of the day, all human beings have rights. And these rights, no matter who you are, tall, short, bad, ugly, slim, fat, True. murderer, sinner, you must, your rights, that is guaranteed under the Convention of the Human Rights Charter, these rights must be respected. That's true. And not only that, you know that he was sick. It is, it, is, it is indicated that he was sick mentally. And of course, the parents definitely indicated that when he took his medication, he would be better. Which means if he was better when he took his medication, the first thing that the police should have figured out is to bring somebody there that could administer his medication. So that he could come back down to his senses since he did not do that. But no police are not... <laughs> wait, wait. And so it's on that front, I want to sympathize with the family the grieving family Go ahead. what i know what i know and i took my notes eh? so i'll be referring to my notes because when you're dealing with issues like that you, you want to refer to notes yep so that you don't forget anything or you don't say something out of your you know out of your head on wednesday morning that is wednesday where's my calendar wednesday the 15th that is about 9 30 9 o'clock 9 30 there about kian was cited by three persons in the woods. I can tell you, the persons, two being from Alayu, one is from St. Joseph, three of them. They cited this guy in the bush and they realized that that is the person of interest that the country basically has been looking for for some time. These people, I'm being told, they give chase. They try to apprehend here. In trying to apprehend Kian, Kian fled. And it is reported to me from numerous sources that in the flee, Kian basically did what he had to do, trying to escape. And basically he jumped in some quote unquote precipice area. I heard that as well. I'm taking it slow because I need you to absorb everything. That most likely was the, the um, photo that we, we showed um some time back with the photo in um layu senjo whichever one it was that could have been the photo right there that he jumped remember there's two people we saw and somebody jumped down so that could have been that photo right there he wasn't cited after that by the three men one from saint joseph two from layu who were in pursuit of him disappear And to put context in what I'm about to tell you, basically it's in the it's in the general area where the police met up with him on Saturday. In the general area, not in the exact area, but it's it's in the general vicinity. Good. And Wednesday, the police Wednesday okay. was alerted, and they came in, and that happened about nine o'clock, nine thirty in the morning. I told you. The police came in, they basically combed the area where Kian was cited by three men and they did not meet up with Kian. That is well, I don't know if they combed the area no? because I remember when we, we had the incident, well, you guys saw it on the vlog, and um, they didn't comb the area properly, man. Because they, supposed, they were even saying that the individual should line up like this and comb through the place that we heard the noise. Some people went up different things. The man could be in a bush hiding under some bush or something. Nobody knows and pass the man straight if you don't comb the thing properly. So combing it properly is kind of a interesting and uh, tone to use. But let's continue. Let's say they, they combed it properly. The police lines. The three men, at least one of them for sure, really tried his best to kind of walk back. We see the police under the bush. Kian was nowhere to be seen. So that was Wednesday. Only pass, no sight of Kian. The search continued. Thursday, the search basically was intensified. Because after getting that big tip off, as it were, that, that break, the police decided, okay, we now know, we now have a general area that we can cover. So the search intensified 
by the police yep and there were teams or squads that dispatched in that area and really was on the manhunt as it were for here and guys the reason why i'm saying that they, they don't they didn't come properly because the mother of the same kian fella the madman was saying that he the police would look go and look for him in the bush and he would be watching the police watch looking for him he would be watching the police looking for him brothers and sisters so it's not far-fetched to say that he most likely was in the very area seeing police passing around him but he know to hide he know to hide and as a result of that saw the police passing and they never find him Before they left, before they left, that is before the teams left, there is normally what you call a, a briefing, as it were. And so that briefing, basically the police got the instructions from their, quote unquote, their, their commanders as to what should be done, what shouldn't be done, who should go in, who should not go in, what should happen first, what, what should happen second, what should happen third. They got that briefing, and so they dispatched. Thursday, whole day, Nothing. another thing, another sighting of here. But the search continued. But we was watching them. Friday, the search continued in a very same manner. Nothing. And basically, it was like what the police were supposed to be doing in the very first instant. On the 7th, when they got the word that Kian had gone with that young child. They were supposed to do that then but for some reason they did the not i guess they the were still morning. bamboozled as it were so they did not on friday when that search was on this is one of the reasons why we say most likely the police them or the, maybe not total police individuals but a number of persons who, who would need to know certain information most likely knew about this and decided to you know hold back a little let's give them a running start let's let's give him a running start or they could have been accomplice to the very thing and the public doesn't know this and you know who knows they basically had to do what they had to do to to make that perimeter around with kian was sighted and they took turns in manning that area so every four to five hours there were different chief of police doing what was expected of them in the first place yeah. and so basically the new kian was in an area just like you see it on the movies, just like how I told you before, they made that perimeter. They knew fully well, or they calculated fully well. He is on foot, so he could not move past one so. mile, two miles, whatever it is, that radius. And so they started to close it. Obviously, they're closing in, communicating with each other, you know. Ever. Communicating with each other, that's something I noticed that they lacked. They lack walkie-talkies, they lack a number of things. They say they could get phone call, but sometimes phone call service is not there. If you had your walkie-talkies, you would be able to maneuver properly. But they didn't have that. You guys noticed when I said this, some of you guys who saw the vlog, you guys noticed when I said that they didn't have much communication, proper communication. Man had to be shouting on man, hey! And when you hear man, hey, I hear somebody calling, running over there. That's what man used to do that, you know. Running over there and those kind of things. And no walkie-talkie. Not quiet. We're talking about being quiet in the bush. Walking, hey, I heard a movement or whatnot. What's the word? Hey, you see something. Hey, look, come over there. Nothing like that. They're talking about phone and phone call service not proper up there. I have T-Mobile. My T-Mobile ser service was higher than flow service. <laughs> hey, that's crazy, man. T-Mobile in America, higher than flow service. That's some boy. So often. But, but, but that was what was supposed to be happening in the first place. Because if Kian was sighted in Warner, living with the child on the 7th of, of June, if we had a real police force, then that would have tickled with them. But, you know, he played it all clear. That would have been over already. They found him, make sure they trunk him or something, and they would have found the girl, wherever she is, hopefully alive. So having set that dragnet in place as it were, and Kian is in that net, it was just a matter of time. And that time came to a head on Saturday. Remember, I started this Saturday and I had to walk back. So now we are on Saturday. Yes. Saturday morning, about 11 o'clock, the Let police me. got the tip off that hey, this brother is by some river in the Lion area. 
I stated that most likely if you in the bush somewhere you go by the river. You got a tip off around 11 a.m. brothers and sisters. 11 a.m. So we get in the time frame. When they descended on that area, it was quote unquote a bogus call or bogus sighting. Oh, okay, okay. It was a gentleman there and his girlfriend, David. Hmm. That was that was a scenario for me. That was Saturday morning, about 11 o'clock. Folks, keep those time lines in your head. 11 o'clock. Because we're going to get into Lincoln Corbett's statement in a while, where he mentioned at least a time that doesn't add up to the reality that went down on Saturday. So it's a blatant lie, police line for the public. So if this journalist wasn't, uh, uh, what are the reasons why they tell me I should have got there? I should have got there for real. You guys know how to break down everything for you. <laughs> but thank God Lofty was there and you know on M1 and so forth. So they know the time frame. People have this forensics going on. Say the time frame doesn't make sense. But he was there. He was on the ground when everything took place. Right there. Let's go. And there are things, there are ways that you can cross check or fact check what Corbett said in his statement against the reality of things. And I say that to say, you saw MO News doing her life. Yep. At Layu, where she basically told the world, she got word, confirmed word, Kian is captured, and so that should set in your mind a time frame. Yep. And now you can juxtapose that against the time frame given by the that police. Lincoln Corbett is giving to the public. Blatantly lying to the public, man. Blatantly lying to the public. But why? Why lie to the public? Alongside MO News. I was there as well for some time in Layu. I did a little coverage there for about half an hour. But I had to leave and to come back because I wasn't well equipped. My battery was going low. I did not have my backup batteries. I did not have my accessories that I needed for the long haul. So I stayed there like half an hour. When I reached to my destination where I was going, it was about 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, I was monitoring MO News. You can do it yourself all the time, just trying to keep abreast. And 3 o'clock, I saw on MO News, about the 3 o'clock hour, the, the ambulance and a Red Cross Jeep Passing. moving out of the area, yep. sirens okay, on, and heading south. Let's go back. 11 o'clock Saturday. The police got that call. It was quote-unquote not the call they needed at the time. That passed. About 12.45, 12.45 to 1 o'clock thereabout. The police, uh, a team, uh, a squad of police met up with Kian, yes, as what his name said, Lincoln said, in the Block Hill area. Now, for those of you who know that area very well, or those of you who don't know that area very well, I went on the ground and did my research as to, guys, show me where is Block Hill area. And Block Hill area is a very mountainous area when you go up there on that plane, on that plateau, in that mountainous area, you can basically, you're overlooking St. Joseph. Oh, that's not Very mountainous. mountainous. All the way up. So a team of police met up with Kian in that area, in the Block Hill area. Hmm. Before that, they combed the cafe area, they combed the car home area, I they were just combing the area. Matter of fact, there were not a team of police, like another team. They were in the Layu area by some business person, which I will keep out of the conversation for now. When that team also got that call in the Layu area, that hey, we, we have sure sighting of our man. And that team left the Layu area where they were and went up to assist. Okay, guys, my battery just went there, but let's go back a little bit. Also got that call in the Layu area that hey, we, we have sure sighting of our man. And that team left the Layu area where they were and went up to assist. Kian I'm being told. When the guys on Wednesday fled after Kian. Or when Kian fled from them, sorry, they ran a chase after Kian. His belongings, some of his belongings stayed down and when the police came on the scene the wednesday i can confirm to you that the police got in their possession they recovered some of the items of kian 
And if the police, well I, well, I know the police always take interest in yours truly lives. Yours truly life. Like what we do in the now. And so if the police, they are true to their conscience. If they are true to what happened on the ground, they will, they will, they will put a tick by what I'm telling you this afternoon. The police found on Wednesday the head tie. Kian used to wear that red head tie around his head. They found that tie. They also found a cutlass of Kian. One he used Wednesday. to have in his back. Yeah. And just for confirmation, that was by no means free fit one. So that means they found the cutlass on Wednesday. Unless the police were saying that they he had another cutlass. Because they said they attacked. They said the madman A.K. Kian attacked them with a cutlass. But if they found the cutlass on Wednesday, what did he tag them with on Saturday? Knowing that three individuals on the same Wednesday found him. And when they found him, he ran away from them. That's why they have to chase. So all of a sudden, the police come in. How the police coming in? And he see the police and decide to go and attack the police. When he choose to run away from the three first individuals that found him on the Wednesday. That's interesting, ain't it? Let's continue right there. They also found and have in their possession as we speak a sleeping bag. Kian, yes, Kian had a sleeping bag. I did see a sleeping bag. Me and my partner did see a sleeping bag and it had a pink one. If you guys look at the vlog, you guys would definitely see that we found a sleeping bag in some bush area in Warner in Warner in Warner Bells one of those places there I think is it yes in Warner in Sultan one of those places brothers and sisters when we went down you guys can check out the vlog yourself on Mr. Lick's vlogs and you guys can look at the latest video and you'll see it for yourself that we did find a sleeping bag I'm not sure if that's the same one but we found it rather interesting that there were two or two of them a pinkish looking thing like a cover like thing and a sleeping bag, black sleeping bag anyways let's continue so these are the three items. The head tie, the red head tie, the sleeping bag, and a cutlass. The police have in their possession as we speak. They got that, they got this on Wednesday 15th. And the cutlass was not three feet tall, three feet long. Keep that in mind as well. When Kian fled from the hmm. three guys, yes, sir. They were giving chase. So that is why, that is why they could the police could, could take these guys' words for for gold as it were and, and really put that parameter in place and voila because they at least they had some tangibles to go by yep. it is said it is reported that when kian fled that cliff like area on wednesday he suffered a broken leg And that broken leg scenario, people, it was when he jumped will, down from the, the cliff. To come to be very critical as the story unfolds. Saturday, about 12.45, 1 o'clock, they met Kian up in the local area. I can tell you, as the persons who were on the scene, they saw what happened and some persons they still have a conscience as to wanting to speak the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth one of them messaged me but they didn't want to send voice notes and this kind of things there this is this is one of the reasons why i tend to react to this thing because i know certain things brothers and sisters <sighs> kian had on his back people on his back a sort of makeshift what i want to call it makeshift shield makeshift something that was made out of zinc material hmm. zinc galvanized material when they saw kian when kian saw them that is the, the squad in the broken area having suffered that broken leg from wednesday kian i'm being told could not do much in terms of running away hmm. but the police say he attacked them 
even though in their possession they got the, the cutlass on Wednesday. All the situation happened that we're talking about there was on Saturday. So the police concocted up a story that was not true and they came to tell the public. What? Police officers, this is one of the reasons why I was, I was talking last time, you know, when I mentioned um, previously, when I mentioned to the police, all the police seen all the police doing wrong and they don't say nothing. And when the public coming for all police officers now, they want to feel like, hey, but I wasn't it. But you don't say nothing. Their police officers were there and saw what happened and they still staying quiet. They quiet because that's what the commissioner, guys. If you have a corrupt partner in, in at the head, you have corruption in the head, brothers and sisters. You know the situation involving all kind of police officers. When police choose to go after citizens instead of actually going after the real things that actually matter, and then you expect them to come and tell the truth. Come on, man. Even I know that the police lie, and I wasn't there. It's simple common sense when you weigh in the balance of different things. What they say in versus the track record of before. And knowing what they actually said about me and my, my lies, brothers and sisters. Can you trust the police now? He did. I'm being told from the sources. And hear me while from the sources. He he rolled. He couldn't stand. He couldn't stand the wreck. So he rolled. Obviously, trying to evade the police, trying yes, to hide them, trying, but the police are done spotting already. Which means the girl wasn't with him. That pretty much indicates that, that right there. It is said. It is said. And I don't know if that is why the police hiding what they're hiding. It is said. The trigger man fought Kian was basically trying to make his escape by getting up to run. I said that. I said that. It looked like he was trying to escape. The only thing that logically made sense, understanding, I look previously, he tried to escape from the previous individuals. Trying to escape from the previous individuals he, that, that, that found him on Wednesday. Why would he run to the police? That's a man that actually has a sleeping bag. Maddy man, not true. He know he had a sleeping bag coming for him to sleep in. That is the thinking of the trigger man. He decided to shoot the man. The only person that would know where Kanisha Aiten is. And so Kian I'm being told was quote unquote in a very helpless state at that time. So Mr. Lincoln Corbett's statement about a free fit cutlass, I can tell you people, it a lie. doesn't add up. Blatant lie. Because he already got it on Wednesday. That means if he had to add another cutlass, you most likely have another cutlass. But of course he was injured. We know about I jumped down some place, some precipice place to escape this this people. He had a broken or injured leg. He's not broken, but most likely a sprained leg. And getting sprayed like not nothing soft, brothers and sisters. So Mr. Lincoln Corbett have to come back to the nation and basically give the nation the truth, the evidence in terms of that free fit cutlass that he spoke of, that was in the possession of Kian, which I will be playing for you in a while. That is no, he has to give possession of two cut. He have to give possession of two cutlasses. Because they found one on Wednesday. It's not just one. They have to give possession of two of them. Because they said that they attacked them on, on, on Saturday when they found the cutlass on Wednesday. So if they found one on Wednesday and they found they, they attacked them, allegedly they attacked them on, on, on Saturday, they have to show, show possession of two of the cutlasses, brothers and sisters. Not one. So many times today, but we'll be extrapolating Lincoln Corbett's statement in just a while. We'll be going through it with a fine tooth comb so that you can see and understand the inconsistencies thereof. So I'm asking Lincoln Corbett the question again tonight, Mr. Lincoln Corbett, sir, are you sticking to your words? That Kian Alexander had a three feet cutlass and attacked you guys that day. 
and was in the attack mode attacking your officers when he got shot hmm. that is the multi-million dollar question to you mr lincoln Gobert. and based on the reports that we heard that his neck must have been fractured or something his neck must have been broken or this kind of things a cervical fracture could also play when he jumped down the phallus or whatnot could also play in the fact that he injured his neck not just his foot alone interesting stuff guys put the puzzles you cannot be that, that, that blind eh? you cannot be that blind it was the mindset of the trigger man at the time after hunting for kian 12 days and counting his brother thought kian was getting away was in the process of getting away and he pulled that trigger and being told at a close enough range and give kian some shots in the stomach area some shots so apparently he's not in his leg i said the, the upper thigh region but apparently the individual was also in his stomach region so that could mean a ruptured um cervical well i'm thinking of the abdomen and this other, other places where the blood could well let me leave that alone and so again, again, people, when you hear about trying to shoot or shoot in the leg, that was not the case. Up. The mm. trigger happy brother shot Kian close enough range with live ammunition. The only man, the only person that knew where this girl is. And then we seen people. We seen people. Searching the forest. Back to square zero. And all you think that that should sit well, boy? All you think that should sit well? So as a result of those rounds that he got, he was bleeding profusely. Now that block hill area that I told you about before, it is not it is not walking from let us say one end of the bayfront to another end of the bayfront. Eh? It is not very mountainous and very difficult to either trek up or trek down. I would like to ask Mr. Corbett again. He said, Guys, you see the blatant lies of the police boy. The very people that we expect to tell us the truth. But they sus I suspected that they, 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 because the guy made an error. He said the, the, the trigger man made an error. But you shouldn't, you, sh you, could, you can't make an error like this because you should have full instructions. If they tell you, do not shoot. To take him out do not do these things unless the instruction was if he tried to escape to shoot was well, maybe that was the instructions but to shoot with live ammunition to the only person that knows knows where the girl is and when i say my things people just think oh it's be behind certain people i come in. guys logic doesn't logic common sense and logic go hand in hand you know the police attended to kian and administered his aid Mr. Corbett, sir, what kind of first aid, aid yes. did you or your guys administer? Just just what? Tell I personally think they were trying to torture him to tell them because most likely they knew that he would most likely pass away just in case. That's what my thoughts is. But anyways, let's continue. That's what the nation needs to know. Of course. It cannot be our guys administer first aid and you just leave it there. No. You are working for and on behalf of the people, my brother. Yep. But they wouldn't answer that because they know if they have to come back and answer these kind of things that they know they will be told a lie in the very first place which would then discredit them but they already discredited so to come out no one reiterate the truth but they can come out and say this is the information that he received because most likely he wasn't there and then other people based off investigation he can come out and make it a little better say based on investigation proper investigation into the matter we found that certain things that was said was not accurate and this is the accurate thing he can come out and say that 
So you kind of soften the blow a little bit. I helping all you out. Come and tell the truth, father. And, so and then just tell the truth, you know, discipline the person that lie to you. That make you come on nation because we know you lie. I know you lie, I wasn't there. If Kian was accidentally shot, like you guys want to tell the public, hmm. an accident is an accident. You see, he was in attack mode, so you defended yourself or your, your officer defended that himself. That's fine. But you now need to come with certain details. What type of first aid was administered? Kian was placed, people, on a stretcher. And at that time, I'm sure you died. Kian was placed on a stretcher, people. Bleeding his guts out. And the long, arduous journey of trekking down that mountain began. So by the time the ambulance came, he was already gone. So by the time they reached down the mountain, he was already gone, brothers and sisters. That's the only thing that makes sense. Mr. Corbett also said in his statement, Kian made certain pronouncements hmm. and he stopped at that. What did Kian tell you, sir? What were the words Kian told your men when he got shot? Folks, I'm going to tell you straight as it is. When Kian got this shot, some being told, he didn't last more than 10 minutes. Hmm. Hence, the reason for, as Corbett said, I, I didn't say, Corbett said, some medical district officer or some district medical officer was called in and she came with the ambulance he or she came with the ambulance eh? and he was pronounced dead D -E -D -D, dead people in any normal situation the police goes on an operation man is dead man is half dead man is injured whatever it is the normal course of operation from the persons who know keep saying you need to bring that brother or bring that injured person to a hospital but him and it him cannot him. be the other way around because a lot of times sometimes you think somebody's dead and it's the hospital that have the facility that have the resources to try to resuscitate if we have them resources that is that person and so when you took on your own as a police force to summon your medical practitioner to come under the bush hmm. and pronounce a man dead, what are you telling the people? Maybe they were trying to cover something up. I said this before, you know, I get three theories. Maybe he was running away. Maybe he did try to attack them and, you know, he, he, he was staying, which apparently now we're realizing that is not the case at all because he got his court on Wednesday. Or the third one, maybe there was some sort of indication of him involving kidnapping, taking somebody, child, for them to do certain things. And behind the public's eye, not knowing what took place, they then had to take him out because he was the only one that knew what went on. If little girl is alive or if she was indeed sacrificed. Who knows? I pray God that is not the case at all. But they took out the very man, the only man that knew where this girl is or was or what happened to her. And then the police come and concoct a story and lie to the public as if the public or everybody in public would just swallow what they're saying. You can see discrepancies. They themselves didn't look to properly do research. They don't like the Prime Minister. Prime Minister go and say, okay, let's see what we can see and whatnot. No. They just come and concoct a story, make it up, and give it to the public to swallow. As if everybody in the public is stupid. What are you saying to the nation? The people at the PMH 
where Kian's body, dead or alive, was supposed to be brought. There is confirmation that his body, the corpse then, it did not reach at the PMH. Yep. Lean and straight. That in and out of itself, it's another case to be answered. Hmm. Why? Remember I told the people, I left Layu area after doing the live for half an hour. I reached on the scene just about 2 o'clock. I left about 2.30. As I told you, I wasn't well equipped. And in my mind, how I got the information when I reached, in my mind, I thought, okay, Kian is captured. That's and so, got. there will be some sort of, quote-unquote, delay. In the bush, Kian is surrounded, he's captured, but I didn't realize the brother was killed. <laughs> so in my mind, I said, okay, it's, it's, it's sort of a long-haul situation this afternoon. So I was going to get better equipped to come back. All the time, I'm monitoring Emo because that is where I kept getting information from. At about 3 o'clock, Emo, I saw, you saw it as well. Both in the, the ambulance. Jeep. That is in the name of Red Cross. Shoot out. That was the Jeep that caught off the road, sort of, in the live area, close to that asphalt plant. Vehicle traffic couldn't go up and down. That Jeep caught up the road. That jeep and the ambulance that was called in with i guess the medical practitioner left about three o'clock i was monitoring the live people yours truly ended up you know where i live i live at cochran yours truly ended up at old mill junction and times like that people i take note of time I'm a stickler for time. If I tell you I'll be on with you for three o'clock and I am on five past three, you can count on that something went seriously wrong. Time is time with me. At 20 past three, yours truly was standing, well not standing, I was in my vehicle and I heard the sirens in the distance coming from the north, blazing coming down. I was heading to Cochrane, but I was in the general old mill area, that intersection right there. I, know what I, mean. I stopped my vehicle and I saw the jeep on the front, ambulance behind that jeep and you had some other persons sort of you know going along with the commotion as it were that ride i'm being told ended up at linus which is just one yes guys well guys you get the whole point right there of course that link will be in the first comment in the, that, that link will be in the description below as well guys but this 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 man i tell you guys what are your thoughts, man? Leave your thoughts in the comment box, comment, comment box below. So the police officers, them lied to the public. Lied. Blatant lies. And you expect us to trust them and what they see? They take how much people life inside the, the cells. I think they take two or three. One, I remember they beat one in Portsmouth. They died. My schoolmate was one of them um, there, but they released him because he was the driver. He didn't know anything about that. And then two people apparently passed away inside custody, under police custody. And they will come and concoct stories to the public. But it, it, people don't see, they just start, no brother, it's not dead, start no, it start from the head. When the head come in and tell you all kind of cock, making all kind of story. There's a phrase, the phrase they had used is we. These are not pie in the sky promises. It starts at the head and it trickles down. And when the young people start to act up in that way now, because they see it happening from the very head, and the very people who are supposed to protect us, the authorities, what do you think is going to happen? Look at set up. Guys, give this video a thumbs up if you understand it. If you want to see more, definitely subscribe and turn on that post notification. Definitely check out the latest BRBP TV podcast. And of course, don't forget to check and um, download the Mr. Lix Tube app on the Google Play Store. That link will be in the first comment in the comment box below as well. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Leave your thoughts in the comment box below. I'll see you guys in the next reaction video. Boom, bang. Stupidness.